In Activity 11, Life at the Ocean's Edge, students examine the shells of a variety of sea animals that live in the intertidal zone. Students first infer the importance of a hard exterior for survival, then examine a variety of mollusk shells, and finally learn to distinguish between bivalves and univalves. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 11, Parts A and B. Magnifiers. Mollusks fact sheets. Bags of assorted mollusk shells. Sets of bivalve mollusk shells, clam, oyster, and scallop. And sets of univalve mollusk shells, auger, babylon, button top, frog, moon, and olive. You will also need to provide pencils, clams or mussels, boxes of crayons, sheets of white paper, and pictures of coastlines. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 11, Parts A and B, and the mollusk fact sheets for each student. Collect pictures of different types of seashores to show sandy, rocky, muddy, and marshy coastlines. You may also want to buy clams or mussels to show students what the animal looks like inside its shell. Each team will need two magnifiers, a box of crayons, and a sheet of white paper on which to place the shells. To begin the activity, distribute the pictures of coastal areas and have students describe the types of shorelines. Inform students that the area where the ocean meets land is called the intertidal zone and that the intertidal zone is a habitat teeming with life. The organisms that live there have adapted to their environment in remarkable ways. In this activity, students will learn how some soft-bodied animals can thrive in such an abrasive environment. Divide the class into teams of four and distribute a bag of assorted shells, four magnifiers, and two sheets of white paper to each group of eight. Note that in this activity, teams will work together and share specimens. Tell students to empty the bag of shells onto one sheet of paper and give them a few minutes to examine each shell. Ask students what are shells and where do they come from? Students probably know that shells are the hard remains of once living sea animals. Explain to the class that the animals who lived in these shells are called mollusks, which means soft bodied. Ask students, what purpose do you think the shell of a mollusk serves? Help students understand that the hard shell protects the soft body of the mollusk inside. Just as our skeleton is on the inside and gives our bodies form and protects our vital organs, mollusk skeletons are on the outside. Their external skeleton, or exoskeleton, is their shell which serves to protect the soft body of the animal that lives inside it. Next, ask students to sort through their shells and separate the flatter shells from the spiral or cone-shaped shells. Inform students that the prefix bi means two and ask which shells do you think are the bivalves? Students may recognize that the flatter shells occur in pairs. Help the class understand that bivalves are mollusks with two shells and that the two hinged shells fit together and can be opened and closed by the animal that lives between them. Then tell students to pick out two similar sized bivalve shelves and fit them together. Introduce the term univalves to the class as soft-bodied mollusks whose shells form a spiral or cone shape. Note that the prefix uni means one and that univalves have just one shell. Next, distribute the set of bivalves and univalves. Each team should also have a box of crayons. Allow students enough time to examine both the bivalve and univalves. Then distribute activity sheet 11, part A, and point to the diagram of the bivalve at the top of the sheet. Tell students that bivalves use muscles to open and close their shells, and that bivalves open their shells to let in food and water and close them to rest or to protect themselves. 
point out the siphon tubes in the diagram. Through one tube, bivalves take in water, absorb oxygen, and filter microscopic food particles from the water. Wastewater leaves through the other siphon tube. Add that most bivalves live in sand or mud, although some attach themselves to rocks and pilings. Most bivalves move by extending and contracting their large muscular foot. However, some can move through a kind of jet propulsion by opening and then clamping shut their shells. Finally, introduce the class to the term beds, which refers to colonies of bivalves. Next, distribute a copy of the mollusks bivalves fact sheet to each student and review the descriptions of each type of shell. Have students match the shells in their sets to the descriptions on the fact sheet. Then have them draw an outline of each shell and label it. Next, draw students' attention to the univalves, also known as gastropods. Inform the class that gastropod comes from the words that mean stomach and foot. Note that all univalves are gastropods, but not all gastropods are univalves. For example, the slug is a gastropod, but not a univalve. Gastropods are abundant and diverse, outnumbered in the animal kingdom only by insects. Distribute Activity Sheet 11, Part B, and point to the diagram of the univalve at the top of the activity sheet. Describe the univalve to the class as having a well-developed head with eyes, a mouth, and tentacles, just like ordinary pond or land snails. Note that these organisms also have a rough, scraping tongue called a radula, which they use to shred vegetable or animal matter. Inform students that many univalves live among rocks and coral reefs, while others dwell in the shallow water along sandy shores. Like bivalves, they have one or more siphon tubes and move by extending and contracting a muscular foot. To protect themselves, they retract their soft bodies into their shells and seal the opening with a horny plug called an operculum. Distribute a copy of the mollusks univalves fact sheet to each student and review the descriptions of each type of shell with students. After each one, have students find and label the shell on their activity sheet. Make sure to give students time to color in the diagrams to match the shells in their set. Finally, let students know that in the next activity, they are going to examine the skeletons of some other sea creatures. To conclude the activity, collect all of the shells and the magnifiers and return them to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.